So the purpose of this video is to discuss the concept of why cells divide. There's more than one answer to this question, so we'll take some time to explore the multitude of things that can cause cells to divide. The first thing for us to look at is the idea that some cells divide to replace damaged cells. So for example, if you get something like a paper cut on your finger, your cells can recognize whether there are other cells around them. And this will be an important concept that we talk about at the end of the chapter when we start discussing cancer cells, because cancer cells do not respond to those cell signals that other cells around them are sending out. But normally, let's say you know your finger before you get the paper cut, your cells are receiving signals from the cells around them because there's other cells next to them. So if you get a paper cut, now there's a gap in between some of your cells. So the cells will recognize that and they'll divide in order to fill that gap. Once they recognize that there's a cell next to them again, they receive that signal and they stop dividing. So there are cell regulators that really determine whether or not cells are dividing. So normally your cells aren't receiving any of those signals. If there's a reason for cells to divide to replace damaged cells, such as the case of uh, something simple like a paper cut, you know, that's one of the reasons we could see cells dividing. So any kind of wound healing or repair that your body has to do, that is coming down to cell division. Uh, something else for us to talk about is just the normal process of an organism growing. So the idea of you growing and getting larger from you know, a kindergartner to a high school student, that's evidence of cell division. Uh, so any type of normal growth is fueled by cell division inside of the body. Uh, this is one that we'll spend some time talking about a little bit more when we get to the second part of this video. But some cells divide because they become too large. There are problems that take place inside the cell as it becomes too big. And uh, we'll take some time in a few minutes to talk about some of those specific issues. But basically, uh, there's an optimum size for cells. And once they start to grow and exceed that optimum size, then the best course of action is for the cells to divide. Uh, the final one for us to talk about on here are that some cells divide for reproduction. And this can look different depending on the complexity of the organism. Uh, for example, some things like bacteria, they have a very simple method for dividing and then reproducing. They basically just split in half. And the name for this process is over here, it's binary fission. And so fusion, right, is bringing things together. Fission, on the other hand, is splitting things apart. So bacteria reproduce very, very simply. They basically just divide in half and, and make a new bacteria. Other more complicated organisms don't necessarily go through that same process. Uh, although we do see like single-celled eukaryotic cells do go through a very similar process. Uh, it's not binary fission, it's a process called mitosis. But in more complex eukaryotic cells like you and me, uh, then in this case, we're going through a different process called meiosis. Uh, we'll talk about this one a bit more at the end of this chapter. So mitosis and meiosis are two very similar terms. Uh, mitosis is the normal process of cell division. Meiosis is a very specific form of cell division that's only used for reproduction. But if we're looking for four main reasons that cells divide, Cells divide to replace damaged cells. It's like repair damage in the organism. They divide because the organism is growing, because the cells are becoming too large, and then just in general terms, they divide to provide for reproduction. So as I said to you before, we'll spend a little bit more time on this one and expand upon this idea of why cells need to divide if they're becoming too big. So the question is, why is this a problem? You know, why is it a big deal if, if cells are too big? Instead of being made up of countless cells, you know, why aren't we made up of 10, like really, really big cells? And there's a multitude of reasons for this, but the, the biggest thing is what's called a surface area to volume ratio. So the problem cells run into with this is cell transport. So we're talking about this one a little bit. Um, we're going through the chapter on cells and cell organelles. We talked about endocytosis and exocytosis and the idea that cells in order to maintain homeostasis need to bring in products and then also send out things that the cell is producing. They also have to get rid of waste products that the cell needs to expel. So if the cell gets a little bit too big, these processes of cell transport start to become unmanageable. And the reason for this is something called a surface area to volume ratio. To give you a visual to kind of drive this one, if we take a look at a cell getting bigger, the nucleus will stay the same size, yet the volume on the inside of the cell gets larger and larger as we go. So as you know, the cell processes are all regulated by the nucleus. So if the cell keeps getting bigger, the nucleus has more and more to regulate. 
The problem with the cell is that the surface area and the volume increase at different rates. So if we look at another example, I think it becomes a bit easier to consider this one. Uh, I know the cell isn't a cube, right? This cell is more of a sphere, but to make it easy mathematically, it's a little bit easier to consider it if um, like the cell was like an even cube on all sides. So if we have our small cube, right, that has a unit of two on every side, the surface area is 24, the volume is eight. So our surface area to volume ratio would give us a three if you just divide surface area by volume. Now, as the cell gets bigger, you can see that both of these values go up. The thing is they don't go up at the same rate. The surface area increases, but the volume increases much faster. So the area inside of the cell is getting bigger much faster than the area outside of the cell. This starts to become apparent once we get to a side value of six. Now both of these numbers are the same, right? Surface area and volume are now even. So our surface area to volume ratio gives us a one, that they're completely even with one another. If we go up just two more units on each side, now you see that the volume has outpaced the surface area by a pretty good amount. The reason this is a problem is the surface area represents the outside part of the cell. It represents the cell membrane. The volume on the inside represents the cytoplasm, like the liquid inside of the cell. If there is much more cytoplasm than there is cell membrane, it becomes very difficult for the cell to regulate products moving in and out of the cell. So basically, like, there's much more area inside of the cell than surface area on the outside to manage what's being produced inside the cell. So the cell won't be able to get rid of waste products fast enough. It won't be able to bring in products from the outside area fast enough because at this point, there's a lot less area on the outside of the cell than volume inside of it. So instead of running into the problems and the inefficiencies that are involved with the cell getting this large, the answer to that problem is for the cell instead to divide. So the cell divides into multiple smaller cells. What we'll also see as a potential solution here is some cells stop growing. Uh, we'll discuss this when we get to the cell cycle. Some cells go into what's called G0 phase, which is a form of like cell dormancy for cells that are no longer growing and dividing. So uh, cells are not necessarily constantly growing throughout their lifetime. What we'll talk about when we move through the chapter are different types of cells. So some types of cells in your body are pretty much growing, dividing all the time. Uh, other types do reach a point where they're in that period of dormancy, uh, again, called G0 phase. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a later video when we start getting into the different steps of the cell cycle. But uh, that's just kind of a preview for this one. I want you to understand that uh, not all cells are always continuously growing, even though cell size you know, certainly is an issue that gets regulated by the process of cell division. So thank you for taking the time to watch this one, and we'll talk about this more in class.